Okay, first skill. The most important skill in Algebra 1 is making sure we understand how to write verbal expressions and algebraic expressions. So we need to be able to translate very well. Let's take a look at these problems together. The first one, 8 times the number x is subtracted by 4. So I know if it says 8 times the number x, that would be 8x. I don't need to do 8 multiplication dot, the x, nothing. We just know side by side means multiply. So that would look like 8x and then subtract by 4. Easy, easy. But now what if I gave you the next algebraic expression? Take a look here. I don't want to say it out loud because it'll give it away. I notice that the 6 and the x to the second power are side by side, so I have to think about what operation that is. That's multiplication. And then I also see it's adding by 7. I can say this in so many different ways. I could say 6 times x squared. I could say the product of 6 and x to the second power. I could say 6 multiplied by x squared. And then I could also say increased by 7, added by 7. There's many different ways to say that part too. I wrote the product because we know the product means the answer to a multiplication problem of six and a number x squared, or I could have said x to the second power, is increased by seven. Next one, five increased by the product of negative three and a number x. So I know five increased, increase means add, we saw that in the previous problem, the product of negative three and a number x. So we know product means multiplication, they're side by side, and we don't need a multiplication x or a raised dot. And so I would be able to write it like this, five minus three x. Next one, I see I have the product of three and x and four and y. One possible way to say this would be three times the number x plus four times the number y is decreased by two, or I could have said subtracted by two. I could have said three multiplied by x added by four multiplied by y. All of those would be great options. Next one, three times the sum of a number x and seven. Now notice this one doesn't say three times x. It says three times the sum of x and seven together. So if I wanna make sure I do three times the entire quantity of x and seven, I have to make sure I put parentheses around my entire x plus seven. And I know it's x plus seven because I see that word sum and sum means the answer to an addition problem. So my result would look like this, three open parentheses, x plus seven, close parentheses. Next one, when I see in fraction form x divided by 2, I just gave it away, fractions are division problems. That fraction bar actually means division. We've learned this before, but we just need a review. So when I look at that, I immediately might say, hey, that's x divided by 2. The fancy word for the answer to a division problem is the quotient. I could say the quotient of x and 2. And then I would say is added by, is increased by. And again, I see my multiplication, so I could do the product of 4 and x, 4 multiplied by x, 4 times x. I chose a fancy quotient. I said the quotient of x and 2 is added by the product of 4 and x. Very fancy. Next one, a number y cubed, ooh, cubed, well, squared we know means the second power. Cubed means what power? 3, good job, because a cube is length times width times height. There's three values to a cube, whereas a square is just length times width. Right? So that's why it's cubed is the second power and squared is the second power and cubed is the third power. So this says a number y cubed plus x squared, ooh, we know squared is the second power, decreased by 7. All right, so let's see. That would be y to the third power plus x to the second power minus 7. Next one. Ooh, I see those parentheses there again. Just like we had in the problem up here that said three times x plus seven, that was three times the sum. If I see a difference, that would look like five times the difference of x and four, and then added by two. So that's what I wrote. Five times the difference of x and four, it's added by two. Next one. The difference of x and y is divided by three and added by eight. So it says the difference of x and y. Well, we know from the previous problem, difference means subtraction, so I would need to do x minus y. 
But it's saying that that whole difference of x minus y is the being divided by 3. Now, when we're translating and we see division, we want to make sure we don't use the division symbol. What we want to do is we want to do exactly what we saw up here with the quotient of x and 2. Division gets put in fraction form. So I'm looking at x minus y over 3, right, divided by 3. My denominator would be 3. And then outside of that part of the expression, added by 8. And the last one, I see another set of parentheses, but that parenthesis is also being raised to the second power. So I would be able to say something like negative 2 times x plus 4 to the second power, or the entire expression, or the sum of x and 4 raised to the second power, or squared, and then subtracted by 1. Here I wrote negative 2 times the square of the sum of a number x and 4 is subtracted by 1. There's so many different ways to translate these. These are only just one option for you. I'm sure you can figure out way more.